Hey everybody, Mr. Bookie Boo here. And today I wanna to take a moment and talk about road plates. I've been getting a lot of questions lately, um, not only about how I raise my city, which is a pretty, pretty typical question, but also how I've incorporated these new road plates into my city. So as you know, you know, Lego's had the 32 by 32 base plate style road plates like forever pretty much at this point. Um, a couple years ago, they started transitioning to this new style of road plate. Um, it's a bit different. I mean, as you can see right away, this is a lot thicker. It's actually um, like it's it's a plate and a tile higher than um, your traditional base plate road plate. So it creates some some issues right away, especially if you're doing city building with modulars and things like that, because modulars are still on the old traditional base plates. Um, the road plates, because they are automatically higher from the get go, it's a lot harder um, to incorporate them into your city without having it look funny, with having the road, you know, the road be taller than the sidewalk, which just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but there are some easy ways to do it. Now, one way absolutely you can do it is to do a full mills um, design. It's expensive with bricks. It takes a lot of effort. You basically have to rebuild most of the modular because you're taking it off and putting it on plates. Um, that's certainly one way you can do it. But I've actually found the way that I do it which I feel is pretty cost effective. And so that's what I'm gonna show you today. So let's take a closer look at how I do road plates and modulars and base plates all in my city. All right, so I'm over here at my work table and I've kind of mocked up uh, kind of a rough idea to give you a feel for what I've done as far as these new road plates go and integrating them with the base plate. Um, the key elements that I use to raise up my modulars is um, a base plate, a plate, and then one of these um, pin pieces, which you can see right here. Um, this is like the, it's, which is sitting on a plate. So I have the plate and the pin, and I'm gonna show you, this is basically what it looks like. So it's kind of like a sandwich. Um, so this is the new base plate. And the reason I use base plates, you can find them pretty cheap on sale usually. Um, if you look around, you can find them as cheap as five, six, seven dollars sometimes. Uh, they can be used, they can be any color, it doesn't really matter because this bottom plate is gonna be hidden. And then you can see in, this, in the sandwich, you can see I have a plate and then I have a pin. The reason I use the pin is, as you can see, the base plate, which this would be your modular, so this is like the front edge of the sidewalk, that pin actually holds this together and it's it's actually pretty tight and it has good clutch power. So, um, although I wouldn't turn your modulars upside down, but you can, it, it makes it really durable and it's all attached. Now the real benefit comes with this is when you add the new road plate, which I've done here. Um, what I've done is I've actually added a curb to it. And this curb actually even has, you can see through here, there's a little um, gutter right here or drain. And so when you put the two together, they're actually at the perfect height for with one another. You can see that right there. Um, this is just built up. So what you do with the edge here is you just take um, some extra plates and they can kind of be whatever random color you have and then you just build up your curb. And so it ends up being one, two, three, and then a tile on top. So three plates and a tile is the same height as this sandwich raising of your modular right here, uh, including the tile sidewalk. So a lot of times the geometry and like, like calculating the height is off a little bit when I found this was the cleanest way to do it while it's still attached so they're not floating because if the modulars are floating just on top of you know random plates um you can run into some issues with them moving around they slide around and they're moving and it's just not it's just not stable this technique makes it very stable and it's precisely the height which i feel is pretty good curb height you can see the curb here um that's a good height it's, you know it's a plate and a tile basically high from the street level which again allows you to do drainage culverts you know things like that um, it's not too tall for the minifigures to step up over. Works. It's simple. And it's minimal on parts. You know, it's just a few plates here and there and a few tiles on top and you have it. Um, the nice thing about these rows I want to mention quickly as well is it's easy to expand these. So this is 16 wide normally. Um, when I add the curb, it becomes 17. But what you can do, and it's usually on, you know, on both sides I'll have the curb, so then it'll technically be like an 18 wide at that point. Uh, but you can also expand the roadway. So if you have a lot of speed champion cars and you want to run those on your roads, they're a little big for these, especially some of the larger or the newer ones, you know, because those are eight wide versus the six wide. They just don't fit and they don't look good. You can easily expand using tiles and plates. 
this roadway out as far as you need to. I added just one extra um, one extra stud of length on this side. So now it would be like a 17 wide row. But if I did the same here, it'd be 18. And then if you added the curb again, it becomes, you know, 20 wide if you had a curb on both sides. So you can expand and contract the road plate as needed. Um, it just depends on how much, you know, plates you have. So these, you know, you start using two by eights or, you know, you could go four by eight if you're going to make it even wider. And then you can still incorporate the curve on the side here. But you can expand and contract as needed with these roads, which is really nice and really handy. And I've done that in a few places. Um, I've experimented with it. It works well. And it just gives you a little more flexibility than, you know, a full on 32 wide base plate road plate that's that's already fixed and you can't adjust it. And even those roads tend to be a little bit narrow because they have the studs on the sides that you have to deal with. And that gives you more, you know, like sidewalk space and then your sidewalk starts looking strange. It's just it creates a whole hassle. And so I, I'm actually pretty happy with this new system. Uh, I really like it. And it's really worked well, especially in my city. And I'll show you, we're gonna go over there in a minute and we'll just kind of walk through it and so you can see it in practice. But um, if you have like a limited space or you really wanna maximize your space that you have, if you're using those Ikea tables that everyone loves that are you know three base plates deep, you start throwing these in and all of a sudden you can, um, you can start doing more with your city. You can add another row of modulars behind more easily and still have room for some greenery in the front. You can add facades beyond that. There's all kinds of, you know, things you can do. You can start thinking about adding like a train track if you want, because you reduce the footprint of the road. And so it just gives you a lot more um, capability to do that. One other thing I'm gonna show you, so like actually I did like a, a template. You don't have to cover the whole base plate for the modulars with those um, plates and pins. You can just do, this is basically what I do. So I just take like a plate and you know, you just kind of stagger them so it's supported. Um, enough and there's typically like five or six studs space in between each one so you just do a simple grid like this and then you just put pins as needed you don't have to put two pins per you know plate you could use one by ones if you have them it doesn't matter uh, the trick is just to get it adequately supported so that it doesn't have any sagging in it or anything like that because some of the modules are pretty heavy and they do you know sag in different places um, also if you have driveways like in corner garage um, the fire station um, I don't know what other ones have driveways, but you can reinforce the driveway part. So you would just put like a full plate across with pins all the way. And then the driveway won't have any sag if you are like running cars through there and stuff. Cause you don't want the, you know, the, it's weird if the plates start getting the little sag sags in them and things like that. You can totally avoid that. So let's go take a look at the city and practice and I'll show you and we'll wrap this up. All right. So this is a great view. It shows you um, the finished street over here on the left. The road or the streets in the middle the finished sidewalk with the curb is on the left and then this kind of gives you an idea of how the the sandwiching works with an actual modular so this is the jazz club which i just finished building um fun build really nice set looks good in the city uh but basically you can see the bottom plate the bottom base plate the plate and then that little round pin piece and then this is the actual modular there's no modifications necessary to the modulars you just take it and plop it right on top of this plate once you build it up and you're good to go. Um, this works really well. And then of course I have to finish the curbing on this side of the street, but I realized since this is actually already sitting on top of a plate, I'm kind of goofed when I built this platform, it's actually a little bit too high. So I'm gonna have to fix that. But basically, you know, you would just build up your curb here and this would line up and off you go. And you can see the finished street, if you look more to the left, you can see how that looks and it just gives you a really clean really nice look and actually this with the austin martin this is the perfect example because i didn't widen these roads at all this is the perfect example you can see how the speed champions cars are just you know massive and they're hanging over the line but if i added another stud or maybe two studs it would fit perfectly right in here and you would have uh, you'd be able to run those speed champion cars with no problem as you look further down the street you can see the regular cars no big deal those are six wides they look great in the city with the with these roads and it looks fine. Now, um, and actually too, you can look over here, you can see an intersection with a crosswalk. It looks great as well. Now you're gonna say, Mr. Bookie Boo, what about the curves? And here I'll show you the solution I did for that. Let's go take a look on the other side here. All right, so it's true there are no curves available with the new road plates um, and that can be an issue, but there are some workarounds. Um, I've seen a few different people do different techniques. This is what I chose to do. So I kind of made my own curve here. Uh, this is just a basic new road plate. 
And what I did is I just kind of used um, some wedges, wedge plates there and a corner piece and just kind of basically curved it out as best as I could. Um, the end result I think is pretty good. I'm happy with it. And it helps that it's also like with I added the forest and trees and stuff right along this edge. So you don't really see it. You just kind of like, especially from these angles, you know it curves, you can kind of see it, but it, it doesn't stand out that much. So it's kind of camouflaged a little bit. But this was the best I could come up with. This little round piece here really helps solidify, um, you know, the fact that it's a curving road. And Lego just doesn't make curves big enough to accommodate this type of a design otherwise. But also, you know, I didn't want to cut this too short because then the cars aren't actually going to be able to make the turn. So, it, you know, you kind of had to make it wide and it just gives you a hint of a suggestion of a curve. Um, and so it's effective and it, and it, it works for now, you know. And I don't know that they're ever going to come out with curves for this system. I can't imagine that. But um, there are things you can do, and you can get pretty creative. Also, if you're going to build bridges, which I don't have right now, but if you want to build bridges, these new road plates make it super easy to build bridges because they already have built-in structural integrity built into it. You don't have to get creative. You used to have to be all technic beams and stuff to build out a bridge with the old road plates. Um, not really needed anymore with these. These are pretty sturdy, just minimal strengthening underneath, and, it, and they... They work really well. Um, so that's pretty much it. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll be happy to go into greater detail with this, show you more examples, um, kind of show you how it works. But again, I'm pretty happy with how these roads turned out. Uh, they really economize on space, which is great. And I've been able to do a lot more, you know, beyond, again, with the facades and things like that, because I have all that extra space beyond now. Whereas before, if this was a 32 wide road plate, the modulars would be set back even further and there'd be no room for this molt, this like depth beyond that you see in the back of the city here. So uh, thanks for watching and I hope you found this useful and I will be back more soon with more content. Take care. Bye.